Shalom and welcome to Secrets Revealed, the Holy Bible. Today we're going to be looking at Leviticus chapter 6. Oh, my camera is not showing right now. Not sure why. Maybe it needs to be on top. Oh, it's doing this funny. Doing something funny today. <laughs> okay, move this up. So today we're looking at Leviticus chapter 6. There are 30 verses, and unfortunately you cannot see my camera. Let me just fix that for a moment. There are 30 verses in this chapter, beginning in verse 2. The first difference is willfully overlooked the commandments of Yah, referring to the soul that sins, uh, versus committing a trespass, the soul that commits a trespass. Uh, so the Maz does not specify whether this was done willfully or unwillfully, but they committed a trespass, uh, whereas it's clear in the sept that this was intentional, in fact, and the whole verse is, uh, it's different. I wouldn't say it's very different, although I did type that there. That's uh, more of a typo. It's different. Uh, let's read it dealt falsely in the affairs of his neighbor versus uh, lie to his neighbor. Uh, just keep in mind that there, there is such a thing as white lies, so not all lies are bad. But if you deal falsely in the affairs of your neighbor, that means you're intentionally trying to harm them. This isn't, you know, dealing falsely for their good because there is a white lie. There are white lies. And... That's why I think the sept is more accurate, saying that you're dealing falsely. You're doing this for a, a ulterior motive or, or a wrong motive. Okay, in the affairs of his neighbor, in the matter of a deposit uh, or concerning fellowship, and that's not too different in the mass, or concerning plunder, okay, taken away by violence, it's similar, or has in anything wronged his neighbor, so wronged versus deceived. Uh, verse 4, we see, whensoever, whensoever he shall have sinned, versus because he has sinned. So one is saying, when this happens, uh, he will do such and such. This is the process he has to go through. These are the actions he must take. Versus, and it shall be because he, ha he has sinned, that he shall, so it's saying, because he's done this, he's going to do this. But uh, I think it makes more sense here saying in the step that if such a scenario happens, uh, he's going, this is, the, this is the course, this is the protocol to follow. Whereas in, in the Maz, it's saying, well, because he sinned, he's going to do this, which doesn't make sense. If that person isn't following these commandments, he won't do it. He won't follow the protocol. So that's a significant difference there. Uh, verse 5 and 6. A value to the amount of the thing in which he trespassed. So he's going to give that, um, that value. Versus with thy estimation. With thy estimation. Uh, why can't I find it there? Oh, it's in verse 6. With thy estimation. So what is the difference here? Well, the thing we need to ask is, who's the one determining the value? Is it the priest? Because it looks like in the sept that uh, the value to the amount. So who determines that? It sounds like it is the priest doing that. That's what it it seems to be here. Whereas in the mass, it sounds like uh, your estimation. So who is your? Is that talking to the priest or is that talking to the person? So that's a little confusing. That could be confusing. Uh, whereas I, I do feel personally it is the priest making that estimation. But you know what? It could be. I could be wrong. It could be the person who who committed the trespass. Okay, verse 9, 
Uh, this is a huge difference, first nine. I, I might make this the title of, of the video. And what we read here is, this is the law, or this the law of, of whole burn offering. This is the whole burn offering, and it's burning on the altar all the night till the morning. And the fire of the altar shall burn on it. It shall not be put out. Verse 9. Keep that in mind. Record that in your minds right now. Especially verse 9. Now let's look in the Maz. Why is, why is this important? Why, am, why is what I'm doing important? We're going to find out right here. Verse 9 in the Masoretic text. This is the law of the burnt offering. It is the burnt offering because of the burning upon the altar all night until the morning. And the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. Okay. It's going to be burning. All right. Sure. So uh, just burn it, you know, have fire burning. But it's not explicit. It's not explicitly e expressed or, or stated that the fire shall not be put out. Meaning, hey, you know what? There's no uh, commandment saying, don't put the fire out. Just, you know, have the fire burning. But, you know, if it goes out, just burn it again. Find some fire somewhere. It doesn't have to be from God. You know, you could reason that way. Uh, so this is a huge difference. And the reason why I say this is because maybe things like the Masoretic text where we see this huge difference, maybe this was why the sons of Aaron died because of the very kinds of people who overlook specific commands just like this cost them their lives. They're dead. They are dead now because they, overlooked that commandment they didn't guard the commandment they didn't pay attention they either were not paying attention or they just were ignorant or willfully or unwillfully either way it cost them their lives don't do this let's not do this and this is why i'm doing this work because if we see something like this we need to point it out we can't just stay silent and people will get killed because you know, they said, oh, but the Masoretic text just says, you know, fire will be burning in it. But it doesn't say, don't put it out. But it does. It does say it. Verse 9 in the Septuagint. Big, huge difference. Huge difference. Okay, moving on. Verse 10. That which has been thoroughly burnt versus ashes. So ashes are thoroughly burnt. Verse 11, robe versus garments. Uh, has been burnt versus ashes. Okay. Verse 12, offerings, offering, pardon, versus offerings. Uh, I think that's throughout. Oh, it's only peace offering. Okay. You know, offering, offering. Yeah. Just at the end. Peace offering versus peace offerings. Uh, verse 13. Remember verse 9, it said, record that in your mind. It says there, uh, what does it say? Shall not be put out, right? Verse 13, what, what do we read here? And the fire shall always burn on the altar. It shall not be extinguished. Okay. Masoretic, what do you say? The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Oh, that's good. But you know what? That's good and it's not good i'll tell you why it's good it's good because this is the second time this is mentioned that the fire shall not go out shall not be extinguished in the maz but in the sep this is the third time it's being said now why is this important because when something is repeated in scripture this is not by accident it is crucial it it means uh, Yah is trying to show us something. He's trying to stress something important. Especially in scripture when you see something repeated three times. You recall the words of Yehoshua, HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. What did he say? You will deny me three times. 
three times, not two times. Sometimes when things happen in threes, there's a, I'm not trying to be superstitious, but that's just a pattern we see in scripture. When something happens three times or is stated three times, pay attention. Don't, don't just let it go over your head. It's not just a warning. It's a very strong warning. It's like, uh, you know, it says high voltage, and then there's a little arrow kind of lightning bolt thing. And then next to it, there's a, there's like a picture of a skull. And then next to it is, you know, another warning. That's what it's like. It's multiple warnings because this is deadly serious. It's not to be uh, trivialized or belittled or overlooked. So that's important. Okay. Moving on, verse 14, sacrifice versus meat offering. Uh, verse 15, fine flour, fine is omitted. And then uh, its versus the, with its oil versus the oil, shall offer up on the altar a burnt offering uh, versus shall burn upon the altar. So it's just worded differently. Uh, however, when you read through, when you read it through, the sentence expresses that it is indeed burnt in both instances. So it's not a huge difference there, but it is expressed differently. Verse 18. Uh, of the priests versus children of Aaron. Uh, why I highlighted this, verse 18, is because every male of the priest, there's a, going to be a time, or there is already a time where it's hard to know, you know, the children of Aaron, when we're saying the, the children of Aaron, like his direct sons, that doesn't include, that may or may not include his grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren, and so on, but here it's in making provision for them every male of the priests. And you can't be a priest if you're not of the line of Aaron. So that's just interesting to note. Verse 20, gift versus offering. Verse 21, offer it needed in rolls versus bacon. So it's expressed differently. Uh, well, uh, actually, not just differently, but it is needed in rolls where we don't see that happening. Uh, we don't see the kneading taking place, and specifically in rolls. Maybe bacon is a way to express that. I'm not sure. I'm not a baker, and especially in the medieval uh, terminology, very well could be what it means, but just at face value, it seems that it is different just from an elementary perspective. Okay, moving on. Verse 22, consumed versus wholly burnt. Uh, so, you know, the reason I point this one out is because recall that the priests are the ones to eat what's left. Sometimes they eat it. Whereas it says here, it shall be wholly burnt. They're not eating it. But then in verse 23, it says, and shall not be eaten. So there are times where they can eat and sometimes where they cannot eat. Uh, but it seems to, to express that this one is not being eaten at all. Uh, consumed could just mean consumed by fire. It doesn't say that they're eating it as a meal. So this could very well just be a synonym. It can be burnt, utterly burnt, okay? So consumed by fire could be the way to, to uh, make sense of that, to understand it. Verse 27, everyone, everyone that touches the flesh of it shall be holy versus whatsoever shall touch the flesh, okay? Uh, so it's describing a, a person, a human being, Whereas whatsoever could be living or dead, could be inanimate, 
an object. Uh, and then we see whosoever garment, any of its blood shall have been sprinkled. So it's talking about shall be washed on, on whosoever the garment shall have been sprinkled. So what we see here in the sept is that the person who's been uh, made unclean, so to speak, ritually unclean, will be washed in the holy place. Uh, so it's focusing, it seems to be focusing on the person and the garment. That's the way I'm understanding it right now, uh, that you're washing the person and the garment. So you're not going to keep that garment with blood on it. Uh, whereas the mass is saying, okay, whoever touches, uh, touches the flesh shall be holy. Okay. When there is sprinkled of the blood on the garment, you shall wash where on it was sprinkled. So you're going to wash that garment. It's not saying you're going to wash that person. This is focusing on the garment only. The sept is focusing on both the garment and the person. So that's interesting. I didn't notice that initially. Just notice that now. Verse 28. Wash. Uh, this is talking about the vessel. You can wash the vessel with water versus rinsing it in water. So just the terminology there. Verse 29. Tuya. Tuya has been omitted. So it'll be, it is most holy. But to who? Well, to Yah. That's important because only Yah, only the Father can determine what is holy and what is not. And then verse 30, to make atonement versus reconcile. Uh, that's a similar meaning, anyhow. So that's all for Leviticus chapter 6. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, may Yah, our Father, uh, bless you and make your way prosperous. You just watched Secrets Revealed. The Holy Bible. Shalom.